All right, hello and welcome back with the color with Jeffrey Morrison. How's it going? All right, we're going to continue working on this section of Diamond Art Club Hogwarts Crest Fine Oddities Black. All right, it's just the shield. All right, so square 22 inches by 26 inches, 56 by 66 centimeters. All right. 42 colors, including four AABs, which stands for Aurora Borealis, and they're an iridescent coated type of drill. Anything under 150 color code is considered an AB, and yeah, they just shine brighter than that of regular gem, uh, drills, gems, seriously. All right, yet again, if you hear random dog barking, I apologize in advance. I am... Um, house sitting for this week, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna switch this wax around in the pen. So I'm gonna, just fighting with the 310 drills now in this section. Literally did like one yellow drill. <laughs> yeah, on the top of the section here. That was funny. So yeah, put it in there. All right. I don't know how far switching around this wax will get me in the tip of the pen. Just give her a giggle. All right, so with any large amounts of a single color, this is color blocking. So color blocking is a single color in a large amount. And confetti is uh, multiple colors in a large area. So, yeah. Anything color blocking, I just kind of break down into smaller sections to make it more manageable. So, yeah, I just do little rectangles or whatever and then just fill those in. Just to kind of. Make it a little easier, a little less tedious. Just color it in bit by bit, just to fill in the section. I had a nice little spell of rain, but yeah, I just opened the door back open for the dog. And I played with her for a bit. <laughs> well, uh, the whip and chat, the previous whip and chat was uploaded. Yeah. And of course, she like starts yelping all that and trying to pick her up, trying to grab her. It's like, oh, cheater. <laughs> Trying to get her to like run around outside or something, but yeah. Just wants to play on the furniture inside and try biting me. <laughs> <laughs> Cute dog. Anyway, this <laughs> what's me an animal. All right. Oh, she was just playing, but yeah. Animal like starts yelping, and it's like, seriously? Are you kidding? And I'm like, Touching you, and you're like melting. <laughs> it's like my hands are acid or something. I was like, holy cow, I'm barely touching you. <laughs> Dog's just losing it. Anyway, ah, <laughs> oh, you want to play fetch with the dog, and then just keeps holding the toy in its mouth, and then runs away from you when you're trying to reach for the stupid toy. <laughs> I don't know, trying to get the dog to be active, but you know, that, that one won't. <laughs> She'll be active on her own accord, I guess. Yeah, so I finished 
listening to Beyonce's Renaissance CD. And yeah, I was headed back into Stratford to head home. And yeah, a car pulls up next to me on the highway. And there's a little kid in the front seat, which is totally beyond me. It was the type of car. I don't see a high chair or anything, but oh, whatever. Uh, anyway. Here I am, like, having Beyonce on, and full knowing that there's, like, coarse language and mature subject matter in these songs, and I just casually turn the volume down and smile at the kid. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's not, uh, <laughs> teach this kid naughty, naughty stuff. I think there was, like, an offensive term used in one of Beyonce's songs on her Renaissance album CD. I heard uh, a couple derogatory terms, but I'm not sure which derogatory term. Uh, they wanted to edit out, I guess, the digital editions of her digital streaming uh, music tracks. I don't know, there's some racial word or something that bothered somebody. So I guess they're going to censor it or delete it from whatever song it was. I can tell you. It's all just a blur. <laughs> yeah, I think I went through her CD twice, which I usually do when I play something in the car. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I heard swearing and there's other mature content, but like, okay, so <laughs> somebody's getting offended over what <laughs> exactly? It's like, oh, well, I don't know. That was a good flow to it. It's okay. Um, to see why there should be like a parade in town square over the music, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> it's new music, but I don't know. I just listened to it twice and it's just like, okay, it's Beyonce. Okay, that's nice. I don't know. <laughs> well, it wasn't terrible, but I don't know. <laughs> Didn't phase me one bit. I listen to music every day, so I'm kind of used to various uh, subject matter, so various topics and stuff. But I wasn't too overly auditorily harmed while listening to her CD. <laughs> I don't know if I have any other Beyonce CDs. I just saw that at Walmart the other day and I'm like, yeah, grab it. Because it was there. I don't know, I wanted to get Chris Brown's new CD, but I don't know. <laughs> Just like his stuff and uh, Lady A, I have yeah listened to their CD a couple times, their new one. But yeah, after that, playing through a couple times, I'm like, yep, yeah, okay, yeah, I got that. <laughs> Basically, Lady A in a nutshell. It's like okay, <laughs> pretty much cookie cutter. <laughs> Country, country pop, poppy country. <laughs> oh well, it works. Pretty cool, a couple notable tracks on that one, but otherwise, yeah. Yeah, I picked up Avril Lavigne's new CD in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's a 
take the cellophane off of that and pop that into the car's CD player. So, she fought Lyme disease, Lyme disease for a few years, and that kind of set her on the sidelines. Got out of music for a bit, and I guess a divorce maybe. I don't know if she's still married or not. But yeah, she just took a break, came back. I think she's touring again, so. Oh well, all good. Well, see how that is when I listen to it. I just, yeah. <laughs> I'll pick up CDs, and if I think I'll like it, I'll check it out. Yeah, Monster X turned out to be K-pop, so yeah, I jogged through that twice. In the car. Today. Yeah, they're a K-pop group, so... Like, okay, I thought it was going to be rap or something. And once I open the... CD case. I think it's just paper. I was like, oh, oh, this is K pop. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I was kind of relieved. <laughs> Rap's okay. Like K pop and all that, but. Yeah, I haven't listened to K pop in a while. I kind of followed it a couple of years ago, but I just. I kind of went, oh, okay, that's that. So many groups to keep track of. K-pop, it gets a little ridiculous. And, of course, that confuse some of the groups. Thinking one song was from one group when it was really from another group. Yeah, just... Yeah, I want to get a CD. I don't shuffle around. I just play the whole thing a couple times. Every once in a while. There are times where I just grab a CD on a regular basis and re-listen to it. <laughs> a couple like that. But... Yeah, years ago, Linkin Park, Paper Cut. Or Hybrid Theory, sorry. Paper Cut's one of the tracks. Yeah, I grew up listening to that. Evanescence Fallen. Like, I think I discovered that by accident. Like, I just picked it up. So, just checked it out and loved it ever since. <laughs> they have, like, the open door and... couple of their other CDs, but yeah, Fallen just feels timeless, Evanescence is Fallen. Yeah, Linkin Park Hybrid Theory, yeah, I listened to that, did laps of that on a CD player. Before I fully moved into St. Mary's, I remember sleeping at one of my mom's friend's house in a St. Mary's. Her friend had been married to a contractor that passed away, but she was still living a really nice house that I think her husband had built. Very nice spiral oak staircase or something. Uh, good thing there was a railing. It kind of went down the steps with my socks and yeah it's where I probably slept a couple times but yeah I held on to the railing but very beautiful stairs yeah, that place is really cool probably at the time I was way younger but yeah now I'd say that's like almost too much house <laughs> yeah, my brother's house is like a family size home, so yeah, it's 
yeah, it's kind of a lot of house in my opinion, but it's nice, but yeah, a little excessive for me. <laughs> it's kind of like a little overwhelming to be hanging out here, but. Oh, my brother has a child and a wife, so. Two. Yeah, safely it's three bedroom, two story, detached house. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, dog's chilling by the open door again, so as long as she gets fresh air. <laughs> Open the door again and it stopped raining. I, I don't know. She's just gonna anchor herself into the ground. Not even make it a complete block. Can uh, walk her properly. Just open the back door. Like, <laughs> uh, I find that so tedious. Like, supposed to walk a dog but <laughs> if one's not cooperating and in a neighborhood and looks like I'm killing the thing in the street trying to drag it or <laughs> snake <sighs> just fine <laughs> Well, it's the weather too. It's like either hot or it starts raining. It's just. I don't know. I haven't been around this dog enough to <laughs> just really know. Lounging out on the back deck just seems to fit the ticket for her, so. I guess. Wow, it's like almost 4.30 already. Holy cow, today's just went whoosh. Yeah, the dog jumped onto my bed and this morning and tried to get me up at 5.30. And I'm like, uh, no thank you. 6.30, okay. Uh, this 5.30 in the morning crap? No. <laughs> it stay on the bed, but holy crap, go to sleep. <laughs> Pull this crap on me. <laughs> Dog does have a crate, but me being downstairs in the basement of the house and then a dog in a crate up here overnight, I can just imagine <laughs> the whimpering and because it's just me here and not the original owners, my sister-in-law or my brother. The dog would just be a total basket case if I put her on the crate, so I'm not. I asked about it. Uh, do I need to crate her overnight? Just like, no, just let her do stuff. She goes on the bed, just, she'll hang out with you on the bed. I'm like, okay, just making sure. <laughs> it's like, do you want the dog on the furniture? Doesn't matter, okay. <laughs> it was obviously garbage and recycling on the street this week, but uh, yeah, I had to go back to St. Mary's and here I am pulling out of the neighborhood, the only driveway that doesn't have garbage and recycling out. I have a feeling there's like compost, like biodegradable waste bins too, or green bins that I saw in my brother's garage. He had one of those bins too. I have a feeling that's compost. Yeah, and they just still collect it on the curb. There's like no arm. 
mechanism to like grab the bins and like dump them into a compartment of a garbage truck or whatever recycling truck oh, I think they do it by hand it's like how many streets in Stratford here yeah in St. Mary's they have bins that a uh, claw picks up and dumps into a truck kind of laugh like you sort your recycling and all that and then all you just see is like the bin being tipped over into the trailer of a truck and it's like why are we even sorting this it just looks like it's going into one conjoined compartment <laughs> cringe every time I see that it's like you wanted us to sort this and you're just pouring it into the back of this trailer nonchalantly. I don't know if there's a separator or what the heck is going on, but it's just like, seriously? <laughs> and then the claw is supposedly or the arm or claw, whatever you want to call it, it's supposed to set the bins back down. The lid's now off of the bins. Like, open. And most of the time I see them, like, tipped over. Or... Yeah. <laughs> Knocked over. The bins stand fine on their own. There's a couple wheels that you can just kind of tilt it at an angle and a handle at the top and you like roll it behind you or slightly tilt it up and uh, move it to where it needs to go. The open end of the bin has to face like the road and then that's how the claw picks it up and pours the debris into the trailer. But the bins have to be like a meter or so apart from each other and not directly under power wires. But, yeah. <laughs> Good thing we have garbage and recycling programs in Stratford and St. Mary's. And, uh, I'm sure there's like Toronto and stuff. But there was a few years ago where Toronto uh, public workers went on strike and garbage piled up everywhere. Yeah, that was a few years ago now, but... I think it was a union or something in, in Toronto, Canada. Where they just wanted pay raises or better benefits or something. Yeah, uh, it's a blur, but <laughs> yeah, I remember that situation. Yeah, when you don't clean up that kind of stuff off the streets, yeah, there's just gonna be like raccoons and stuff tearing in bags and trying to open bins. But I think Toronto has like locking mechanisms to on the lids to prevent rodents from getting in there or vermin <laughs> getting into the garbage I don't know uh, raccoons probably watch like a how-to video of how to get into those things or they tell their friends <laughs> and they break into them anyway I'd imagine but dear knows <laughs> oh well mm. Well, if the garbage gets too bad, I have a fire pit at home. Just grab the garbage, put it on the back of my car, and can torch it sometime. Garbage from here. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, all that's left in this section is the 310. Which I'm just doing 
bit by bit here. Yeah, I'll just keep powering through. I'll just keep going just along the bottom here and then kind of gently row. I'll just kind of do a serpentine kind of right to left motion to fill this canvas in and yeah, just work my way up. Yeah, well, I'll be with this canvas for a bit, but shouldn't take as long as Fine Soft Day Dreamer Designs. Last canvas I worked on. Yeah, all good. Yeah, I booked uh, an appointment to get my car serviced because my oil life is at like 10% and it's like, oh, the guy who called me from Honda service was like, oh, you'll get another two weeks out of that if I uh, couldn't get an appointment booked. I'm like, I have the week off now, so I'm like, I'm doing it this week. <laughs> I have to sit there for a couple hours. I don't two and a half to like three hours to. It's more than just an oil change. It's like a, it's a little bit of a process. Yeah, and I'll notice that my exhaust is missing, and a couple other parts, and they'll say, "Oh, this is a few hundred dollars." I'm like, just do the service that's listed. Like, they're website is terrible because they have like a maintenance codes maintenance minder codes and wrench shows up on your dashboard if you're due for a service and they'll only service it when there's a maintenance minder just so it doesn't screw up the internal computer of the car but I can even like select this service code I had to type it in Like, I got the appointment, but like, okay, it's like a Honda Fit. It's like Honda for crying out loud. Just like have a drop down menu with like all these service codes. And I'm pretty sure it's fairly involved. It's like tire rotation and fluid checks and like checking the brakes probably and all that. Oh, it's a 10 year old car. But yeah, it, it's involved, but yeah, gambling with like a 10% oil life while traveling like 20 kilometers roughly <laughs> back and forth between Stratford and St. Mary's nearly every day. Yeah, it's really not... <laughs> Really not comfortable with that. <laughs> There's a maintenance binder up there for a reason, because it's been a chunk between services. But yeah, get that solved this Friday. And my brother and his wife and kid will come home Friday night this week so oh I'll just send my brother a message so he knows what's going on probably be like packing out my stuff once I get back from Honda or something and then yeah let's get out <laughs> then I'll have like till Tuesday night like for more time off but without a house sitting like just time to myself back at home but yeah if it uh, all goes according to plan but anyway you've been watching that goes the color with Jeffrey Morrison down below in the description uh, I'll put my Facebook profile name my echoes of color Facebook business page and my Instagram 
And yeah, I'll post my walking challenge that website. Just URLs, they're not affiliate links. Uh, Conquerors, Lord of the Rings, a five part uh, journey across Middle Earth virtually. And Silk Road by a Pacer is a 3,000 something kilometer trek across Asia. We're uh, multiple trading routes are like one path where they traded silks and stuff all those times back so yeah. it's just one fixed path but it's a it was a multiple a series of multiple trading routes used in like 400 something BC maybe uh, before Christ or after Christ AD maybe uh, I don't know anyway yeah 3,000 something kilometers that challenge just automatically records my steps and updates automatically so <laughs> uh, Lord of the Rings one I have to use the health app to update and cross Canada one which is not listed I have to input data too but anyway take care all the best and I'll see you again next time bye